What's going on guys? So we are back at it with part three of this build along series. And if you haven't seen the last couple videos, basically I've got this knife template that everybody's working off of and we've got it heat treated. And today we're ready to kind of finish the flats of this knife and add our bevels and do whatever we need to do before we're ready to do the handles for this design. Now, um, if you haven't seen the last two videos, go watch those to kind of get caught up. You've still got plenty of time to get in on this challenge. Um, the requirements are March 1st to get your knife submitted for judging. So you've got plenty of time if you still want to get in on this. Like I said, just go check out the last couple videos to kind of get up to speed. Now, here is where mine is at right now. Again, this was an Alabama Damascus blank. Um, and we got it heat treated. If you saw the last video, it picked up just a wicked warp and I've pretty much got it fixed. So what I did is a shim temper on it, which kind of brought, it was like a complete banana. So I got that fixed. And uh, if you want more info on that, I've got a video up on shim tempering and fixing warps. Go watch that. I didn't really cover it in this series. So what we're going to do now is get the, the flats of this knife cleaned up and ready to grind our bevels. Now, I'm going to be using the surface grinder from OBM Tools, which is the, a huge sponsor in this build along. Um, and we're using it on their Dominator grinder, which is their kind of their top dog, tilting, horizontal, vertical, um, super nice setup. Now, you guys might not have this at home, so I'll kind of talk you through cleaning the flats up of this knife, maybe a couple other ways besides this. But um, the surface grinder attachment is just extremely handy for this. And it's also good for getting out really slight warps in your blade and making sure it's super, 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 super flat before you get your handles put on. So just gives you a really good end result. And I'm going to walk you through using this. And then I'll kind of explain, if you don't have this, how to get this step done. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so real quickly, if you guys haven't ever seen one of these, Basically, it comes with this, this contact wheel that you can see your belt rides on, and it's got these wheels right here that this piece rides on, which is a magnetic plate. You can see here, it sticks on there, okay? And all this is, is it fits in this track like that, and then you go back and forth, obviously while the grinder is running, and it just gets your, your flats of your knife Super, super flat, like I said, very flat and clean. So what I like to do normally is start off with a, a 60 grit belt and then I bring it up to whatever finish I do my bevels at. So we're gonna bring this all the way up to probably a 240 grit finish and um, get this really, really clean and ready to grind our bevels. Okay, just to show you guys really quick kind of what this looks like, you can see already that just doing, you know, whatever I did there, 10 passes or so, it's got all that kind of rough heat treat scale off the blade and it's already super clean and that's with the 60 grit belt. So it just gets you a really good clean finish really, really fast. So basically what I'm gonna do is run, do the exact same thing, flip the knife over, um, and then kind of go up in belt progression the same way I do for grinding bevels. So we're going to go 60 grit, 120 grit, and then either 180 or 240. And then you can even do like a scotch bright belt on these or a Trizac belt. You can take it as high as you want and the results will just get better and better. But for this, since we're doing Damascus, this is going to get hand sanded. I'm probably going to take it to 180, um, the same as what I'll take the bevels, and then we'll jump to hand sanding after that.
you want to be careful because it does get a little warm. But there you can kind of see how clean, you can see that Damascus pattern popping through too, how clean the finish is. And that's a uh, 180 Red Label Abrasives belt there. So that's all I did, a 60, or I think I started with a 60 to a 120, 180, and bam, there you have it. So that's one of those tools that I never knew how bad I needed it until I owned one. And it's uh, definitely, definitely worth looking into. Now, now that that's done, I'm going to quickly kind of wipe this down a little bit because these will rust. I'm just going to, this is just old oily rag. And sorry about my heater running, you guys. I don't know how loud it is in the video, but it is cold here in Michigan. So the heater will probably be running. So now what we have to do is kind of decide how we want to grind this knife. Now, before we do that, I obviously, I showed you in the first video, I've got to clean up. Uh, this part of the knife, that's that little water jet tab sticking out. I'm going to clean that up, get this cleaned to where we can mark our center scribe line. And I'm also going to clean the top of the knife up as well. Now, if you guys don't have one of these surface grinder attachments, which a lot of people don't, um, there's a couple ways you can get results like this. Um, what I used to do is I would use my flat platen on the 2x72 grinder and you can get one of those like handheld sticky magnets and stick it on one side of the knife and kind of hold it up against your flat platen um, and go through the same grip progression. Now that works. Uh, that works as well. It, uh, it doesn't give you as good a results, especially because Flat platens are always warped and weird just because from use. So if your flat platen isn't brand new or freshly surface ground, um, it's not going to be as good of results as this. Now, if you don't have a 2x72 uh, and maybe you're working with a 1x30 and your platen isn't tall enough, you could do this by hand as well. You could just get a little granite plate and hand sand the flats of this and you'd end up with really good results too, but uh, probably be a little time consuming. So the surface grinder is the way to go. And um, I'm going to, like I said, clean this spot, clean this up on the two by 72. And then we will talk about how we're gonna grind these bells. All right, guys, so we just cleaned up kind of that top and the edge of the knife with a surface conditioning belt just to get rid of that uh, kind of nasty forge or heat treat finish. And what I'm doing now is kind of marking the edge of the knife with a marker. And you can use layout die or whatever you want to use. But we're going to get our center scribe line in here to kind of keep it, uh, keep everything crisp and clean and centered while we grind our bevels. Now, I don't know how I want to grind the bevels on this. That's been something that I've been kind of fighting. And the whole thing with this knife and design is I want it to be really thin and just really, really slicey and sharp. Um, so I'm going to take the edge down really, really thin. And I want this thing to almost be a full flat grind. Um, but I kind of like the looks of it not being full flat. So my goal here is to take it up really high and maybe leave just, I don't want it to be full flat, okay? <laughs> so, but it might end up being that way. And what I found is the thinner of stock you're using for your knife, the harder it is to keep a really good crispy bevel. And so we'll see how it goes once we're over on the grinder. It might end up going full flat, but um, there's lots of ways to get your center scribe. I just use uh, one of these and this stock is down to about 90 thousandths now that I've surface ground it. And uh, we're going to kind of mark our center spot on this blade very carefully. Not a lot of meat on this blade. And then we're going to I am going to do the freehand grind on this. If you guys want to use a jig, you can do however you want. But what I'm going to use 
is just this little homemade kind of file guide jig thing, um, which you can buy these as well. But I made this one and we're going to kind of put it on here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing at a little bit of an angle. I, I always kind of have my little angle plunge there and then we're going to tighten this down. And as far as grinding this thing goes, I normally start with a 36 grit belt. Um, I do all my belt grinding on the KMG TX grinder, which is another awesome sponsor for this build. Um, but I think because this is such a small, thin knife, I'm probably going to start with a 60 grit belt. Um, just because there's not a ton of material you have to hog off. So we're going to probably go 60 grit and then a 120 uh, and then probably 180 and then finish it with a Trizac, uh, I believe an A65 Trizac. And that will give me a clean enough finish to kind of start my hand sanding process because this is Damascus. If you guys are doing a normal mono steel build, you can finish this however you want and you can grind your bevels however you want. I'm just kind of showing my process of doing this Damascus build um, just to kind of show you guys again how easy it is to work with Damascus and I wanted to kind of have that all relate with this. So let's jump over to the grinder, uh, throw a fresh red label abrasive 60 grit belt on there and um, wish me luck. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so what this little jig does is gives you a permanent stop to where both sides of your knife will be even on your plunge. Um, and so what I do a lot of times is kind of have the tracking on the belt the same on both sides of the platen. And this gives you something to be able to kind of hold against the platen with that jig. And that way you don't take it your bevel over too far and it's going to be even on both sides. So um, it's just a little guide. And also I use it because it gives you something to hold on to when you're grinding. Um, you know, I've gotten to where I could grind without this jig, but it gives my fingers something to hold on to. And I just like using it. So again, you don't have to, but that's just the way I do it. So let's get this belt back on here. Again, this is a 60 grit belt to start our grind. And uh, let's see how this goes. So we did the bulk of our grinding there and got it the edge down a little bit. I'll show you with that 60 grit belt. And now we're going to throw on a pretty fresh 120. And let's show you kind of what the grind looks like so far. Pretty rough and pretty low. And you can see how much I have left on the edge, kind of. Um, you know, you want to leave enough meat on there to where you can take your final grit finish down. I guess there's maybe 25 thousandths on the edge right now, probably. And that gives me plenty of meat to work through the grit. Yeah, right about 30. And I'm going to bring this down to like 0 0.5, 0 0.05 is my plan, because I want a super thin edge. So now what I'm going to do with this 120 grit belt bring my bevels up a little bit higher, um, clean them up, get rid of those 60 grit uh, scratches. And then uh, 
I'm gonna bring it, my bevel up almost to where I want it with this 120. Um, then once you jump to your 180 and your Trizac belt, you're really just refining the scratch pattern and crisping up kind of the top edge of that bevel. So hopefully I can keep it, I want it to come up a little higher than this, obviously, um, but I want to keep a kind of pronounced bevel there and try to keep it from going full flat grind. And it's pretty tricky with this small of a blade. So let's see what happens. And you can see right here, we're not 100% even on our plunge. You, oh man, it's hard to show you guys, but you can see. And what I do is as I work up through the grits, I adjust that a little bit. I mean, everything's centered, but you can see the tracking was a little different on one side. So watch your tracking as you grind this. And that has a lot to do with how that, uh, kind of that plunge spot looks at your final result. I don't think I explained that good at all, but I've got a ton of videos up on grinding. Um, if you want more detail on how I grind bevels, go check those videos out. Um, I'm just trying to kind of give you guys the gist of how I'm getting this done. Oh, also as I go up and grit, I slow the grinder down a little bit. Like I was at 70% power. So now I'm gonna bump it to like 55 or so um, with this 120 grit. Slow everything down, start kind of really focusing on getting stuff crisp and hope that it all works out. All right, so far we're looking pretty good actually. Um, I am through the 180 and let me show you guys just really quick what it's looking like. Pretty cool, kind of has a cool where it goes up higher and then swoops down a little bit at that belly. I've got to bring this side up just a little bit higher. Okay, so now kind of my trick to grinding and I've this has helped me out so much um, is buying these Trizac belts and and what these are is they've got these ridges in them and if you haven't bought any of these pick up a couple um, they're not cheap but they work really good and actually this one it's kind of worn out I might use a new one for this because this grind's looking pretty good but what this does is like when you if you guys have ground bevels before as you get higher in the grit it's almost like the belts get thinner and you have a little bit less uh, squish in that belt when you go to grind a bevel. Um, it's hard to explain, but but I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. When you get up in the higher grits and you're trying to clean that bevel up and it'll leave like a high and a low spot in your bevel. And there's ways to crack that. Like, you know, you can add a leather strip to your platen to kind of give that belt a little bit of give. Um, but what I've found is using these Trizac belts, since they are kind of thick, you can see how thick they are, they give you that little bit of forgiveness. And it, so it helps you keep your bevel really clean and flat. And it also helps crisp up that bevel. You don't use a lot of pressure with these. You try to keep your pressure low and uh, just pick up a couple. Now this one is an A65. And their grits are rated weird. Like, I don't know why they don't just tell you what grit they are. I'm sure there's reasoning behind it. But I believe this one's comparable to like a 240-ish. Now, they make them up to like really high grit, 800, I think. And they even have a little bit more a coarse one than this that I need to try. But these A65s end up giving me a really good finish um, after doing a 180 grit finish. You know, jump to this and it gives you really good results. So we're gonna strap one of these up and I'm gonna slow it down to about 40% power on the grinder. Um, again, these passes, I'm just focusing on crisping up the bevel, refining that scratch pattern. This is such a small blade, you guys, it's hard to show off. But uh, 
We're gonna just crisp everything up a little bit. Make sure our plunge is super even there at that sharpening choil and get this thing ready to hand sand. Right, guys well I got a little bit lucky on this one it turned out pretty good um, I uh, gosh I've had like three cups of coffee this morning and no food I gotta go get some lunch and I could definitely uh, feel a little shake starting to happen there at the end of that grind which is never good but let's see if I can I might actually flip the camera around and show you guys kind of a close-up of what this looks like right now and yeah, pretty good, pretty even, pretty cool. I like it. All right, so let's get into the hand sanding uh, fun part of this build. Now, you can kind of see here, I've got those bevels nice and crispy, okay? so. What I struggle with a lot um, is getting the blades that I hand sand, keeping that bevel really crisp. And what really, really helps with that is when you are doing your hand sanding, if you use a little solid back stick or something like that to wrap your sandpaper around. That at least helps me a lot. So you can see here, I've just got a piece of wood and I'm gonna clamp that blade down to that piece of wood just to keep it secure while we're doing the hand sanding. And I think with this, I'm gonna start with a 220 because I did take it up to that Trizac belt. So um, I don't think I'm gonna have any scratches, you know, like that I need to get out with a 120. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with this process. If you want to see more in depth how I finish Alabama Damascus. I just put up a video a few weeks ago, so scroll down um, and I kind of go over my process a little bit in depth. So I'm not gonna do that, but what I'm gonna do quickly, hand sand this up to about 800 grit. Um, and then I'll take you over to the acid. I'll show you really quick what I'm gonna do to get this etch going and uh, we'll see how it's looking. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Okay, so once you're done with one side of hand sanding, what I like to do is tape that side up that's finished. So then when you go to put it back down on the board to do the other side, you don't scratch it all up. Now, as far as hand sanding goes, the only advice I can give you guys is take your time, uh, use fresh sandpaper. Don't try to just rub and rub with old worn out sandpaper. Um, and if you, still have scratches in your blade at a certain grit, you know, take your time and get those scratches out before moving to the next grit. I know everybody wants to rush and get everything done fast, but hand sanding, you just have to take your time, do it right the first time so you don't have to go back and do it again. Um, so this is kind of the only downfall of working with this Damascus is you do, technically you should take your time to hand sand it. If you wanted to, finish this on the belt like we already did up to 220 or you could maybe bring it a little higher and etch it, um, you'll get okay results. The finish will still look okay, but when you take it up to around 800 with this steel, it really just gives the contrast. It gives you a lot more contrast in the Damascus. And for me, it's worth taking the little bit extra time to hand sand before etching. So take that for what it is. 
I'm gonna get this side hand sanded and then I will jump over to the acid tank and show you guys my etching process for Alabama Damascus. All right, so we've got our blade hand sanded up to 800 grit. Um, that's just what I take mine up to. This Damascus, it seems like 800, gives me the best result. I've taken it way higher. I've tried, experimented a lot with it and that's just what works for me. So I've got some uh, lacquer thinner there in that bottle and we are going to get this blade cleaned up really, really good. I just, uh, acetone, whatever you have to clean it, I'm sure will work. You just wanna get all those little oils, imperfections and fingerprints off that blade before you etch it because you uh, don't want those showing up after your etch. So we're gonna clean this up. And right here is my tank of acid that I use. And uh, I use a combination of ferric chloride which is this stuff right here, and apple cider vinegar. And I do a 50-50 mix, and it seems to give me pretty good results. A lot of people use it with uh, distilled water. You can mix it with a lot of stuff and it still works really good. But So I'm wiping this down again with a really clean dry rag after I clean it with the acetone, because sometimes it leaves little lines from that uh, cleaner or that's lacquer thinner sorry and uh you do not want any of that in when you go to etch it so i just take a little piece of wire string it through there and it'll go right in the acid here now i think i'm going to give this probably i don't want to do a crazy deep etch on it and this is relatively new acid and you'll find that when you have it nice and fresh, it etches a lot faster um, rather than some older worn out stuff. But, oh man, that's looking cool. So I'm gonna leave this for about probably five or eight minutes. And then I will uh, kind of show you how it's looking and show you my next step. All right, so the first etch has been going for about eight minutes. Let's pull it out and kind of see how it's looking like looks good and even and man that's looking wild super cool well guys we're getting close here so i've got my first etch cycle done i'm going to pull this out i'm going to rinse it really good and i'm going to sand it again and what i do is i go at you know initial etch was at 800 i'll go inside clean it sand it to 1200 do another quick etch and then bring it back inside, do it to 2000 grit, and then it goes in the coffee etch. Now, if you want more detail than that, go watch that last video I put up. Like I said, I think it was a month or so ago, I did a really in-depth video on how I etched this Damascus. So I'm gonna check back in once the coffee etch is done, so it'll probably be tomorrow. Um, and then I'm gonna go over kind of what's gonna happen for the next video and just give you guys a couple more details. All right, so it's a couple days later um, after doing that hand sanding portion. I went ahead and let that blade soak in the coffee for about 28 hours. Um, you kind of, I just check it every few hours and see what the contrast is looking like. I probably could have let it go another day or so and it would have been fine, um, but it's looking awesome. So um, let me give you guys a quick shot of it. Hopefully this shows up okay in the camera. You can see I was able to keep those bevels nice and crisp, um, which I really like. And, man, the pattern's really cool, too. Again, this was that Alabama Damascus. And there you have it. So this portion of the video is done. Um, we are going to be working on the handles for the next video. Uh, my plan is to kind of go over the kind of, again, quick and simple how to put handles on a knife. And then that will be the final video. We'll install the handles, we'll sand them down, get them finished, and that will be it. So look for that video in about a week from when this one's posted. And then that way there should still be about three weeks before your knife has to be submitted for this build along. So it gives everybody plenty of time um, to be able to kind of tinker with this on the weekends or whatever and still be able to submit a knife. I already have a couple people finished with their builds, which is awesome. So um, that's what I'm actually going to work on that this week. 
I did find a set of scales that I'm gonna do for this build in my scrap bin. Um, I'm not gonna show them real close today because I want you guys to uh, kind of keep you guys hanging for what's going on for next video. Um, but there's mammoth uh, molar involved and some really cool stabilized Hawaiian mango. They're just pretty cool. So this is gonna be a cool build. Um, in the meantime, if you guys have any questions for me or anything like that, if I messed up explaining a step, just shoot me a uh, message or comment below. I'm also going to be finishing up, uh, I think, five more of these this week is kind of my plan. I got all of these heat treated, um, and I'm going to just kind of do some random handles on them, I think, if I have time this week and post these up for sale. So if you want to try to snag one of these, I'm going to have three in the uh, 1075 and two Damascus ones available um, at some point with random handles. Haven't decided on handles yet, but uh, hopefully you guys are kind of liking this build along. Um, I'm having fun with it. Hopefully you guys are too. And thank you for watching.